All right, you're recording. Welcome back to D1 Sweetness and more Tag 8. I'm going to talk about my beginner airplane or trainer airplane that I bought for me. Uh, me and my son, we bought a Carbon Cub and we also bought the Prunus STS uh, 1.5, which you're going to see us flying, as well as the video of how many times I've crashed it. Um, first and foremost, it is extremely durable. I've crashed it now somehow into a couple fences, flipped it over on the ground, uh, crashed into the ground. But now let's talk about why I crashed and how can you prevent that as a beginner. Well, one, leave it in beginner. Two, it must be set up correctly. So when you're on the ground, you must have the controller on, then plug in the battery in your airplane, and then on the side of the airplane, it has an on-off switch and you turn it on. It must be on level ground. You must not touch it, you must not hold it, and that's why I wrecked, because I was holding it like this and letting it set its level and gyros. That was totally incorrect, so when I got in the air, I was flying expert, got into a panic mode, hit it into basic. Well, basic uh, mode was set up incorrectly, therefore the airplane nosedived and went right into the ground, and that's why you see that black tape on it and a uh, messed up prop. Other than that, um, the landing gear did bend a little bit, which you can see, and the repairs of everything is going to come to about $49. So that was a, a, a pretty, pretty big learning uh, curve right there that could have been prevented by just setting the airplane up correct uh, when we turn it on. Other than that, I love to fly it. it it's huge. It's super clean. And my recommendations are don't buy the GPS. Do not buy the landing uh, auto assist. Those are extras. We don't have those on any of our airplanes and we don't have any trouble with it being in beginner mode. Yes, as we get more experience, we will fly an expert. And that's the other thing. I fly an expert when I get it up to about 200 feet. And the reason why I like it around 200 feet is because if I lose control, I got some time to fix it and go back to my beginner mode or panic mode, which that's also really cool that I can fly an expert flip barrel rolls all of a sudden get disoriented lose control flip it back to uh, basic mode and it will unflip itself un uh, it'll become oriented and fly great um, and those are really good things because otherwise it will get a little expensive but other than that uh, out of these two airplanes that you see us uh, doing I would absolutely recommend the carbon cub over the apprentice and the reason why is the carbon cub is a little smaller and that makes the world a difference when you're going out to the airfield and you're loading up your truck and uh, the apprentice is so big, it's just, there's really, all we can take out is two airplanes and they're on top of each other. So I, I do like the smaller one and it does work out a lot better. Um, other than that, it comes with the DXS controller. So far, we haven't had any issues with that. All right. Um, I'm going to show you the apprentice, all the wrecks that we've done and how beat up it is. And we're going to replace all the parts. So as you can see, we hit the blade or the prop. Still flies. We've been flying it for over a week like that. And if you can look over here on the wings, the wings are still really good after hitting a fence. But you can see a little bit of damage and a little bit over here from hitting a fence. And let's look at the other wing. So when you start to think about what it's been through and we did, we fell out of the sky on this wreck and I've already talked about it earlier in this video of how we did it, as well as we got this in and we stripped it out with the brass. So we got to replace the whole landing gear and the landing gear is bent. So we're gonna, we're just gonna replace everything and go back to original. 
All right, so the very first thing I'm gonna do, we're gonna take off uh, the rubber bands. One of the other things that I noticed about the wing is when I'm out there hot dogging it and doing flips and barrel rolls, these wings kind of bend a little bit and it, and it shifts on here because all they are is held down by these rubber bands. There's no like lock uh, method or glue. The other thing is when you put them together, make sure you have them all the way really tight together. That was a mistake I did. I didn't have them on tight. So let's take off all the rubber bands first. Okay, keep holding the airplane. Yeah. All right, so now when you take the airplane off, you're gonna see it's hooked up to the ailerons, and those are labeled. Don't take the labels off so that you don't have to guess and play, um, and you just always hook them up uh, correctly. So let's disconnect the wing all together, and then we'll put this in a very safe place so no one walks on it, and let's get this right here. There you go, son. All right, let me put this in a safe place. See all the good stuff in there. <laughs> Matter of fact, we probably should. Uh, everything's probably good. Yeah. See this right here? Mm -hmm. Hey. Oh, that's where the binding cord goes. Mm -hmm. Who knew? All you need to do is squeeze this little black uh, thing and then that front nose comes off and you can see all the damage on it. But I'm gonna use that again, it's still good. All right, will you hand me the that nut socket? Screw. Yeah, the nut screw. All right, and as you can see, that's gonna be a 10 millimeter uh, that's gonna get this uh, nut off the prop so we can get the prop off. So you're gonna have a nut and you're gonna have a washer that go on. Don't lose those, put them to the side. And then that's the, the, the cap that we were grabbing. And then this just comes right off. And you can see there's no, there's no cracks, nothing like that. It's actually still good and operational, but uh, I got brand new ones that I bought for spares, so we're going to put on a new one when we go back on. But I'm still going to keep this one because it's good in a pinch if I had to. So go ahead, set that to the side. Yep. Front nose piece is held on by three tiny little screws. And hand the screws to me once they're out. Ooh, careful, careful. All right. Screw one is out. Did you hold this so the wing doesn't hit? Yeah. And... The other screw is going to be right here. As you can see how beat up it is uh, from crashing. Um, but you know what? In all honesty, they're extremely durable. Um, I'm a beginner, and I'm going to be a little bit more uh, ambitious of uh, going to expert mode than my son will be. Uh, one, because he just doesn't want to wreck his, and I don't blame him. I don't want to wreck mine either. But I also know that that is part of learning, is that failure and wrecking. And, well... That's how we learned that we were starting it up incorrectly. So again, put the battery in, make sure the switch is on off. Yeah, it's on off. On off and put the battery in and uh, start up your controller, your transmitter, and then turn this on and let it be on level ground. Go ahead, set that down, G. Yep. So as you can see, we took a good nose dive, hit the prop, all that. And my, my word of advice, if you're gonna hit the ground, do the kill switch on your controller for the engine. And I really believe, and I truly believe that saved my prop. Go ahead, set that to the side. Yep. And then, take off these. I'm gonna be taking this front nose piece off so I can replace this whole uh, arm right here because we stripped out the brass piece and we can't get a good grip on our, on our wheel as well as we bent it and crashed, so. Okay. 
Don't really mind. There you go. Nice. There we go. That one's one a scary. And then when we're done with all this, we gotta do a little straighten up the rudder. Okay, hold there for me. Yeah. Oh, that slid right out. All right, so on that landing gear, a little brass thing in there. When we tightened that, we over tightened it and we stripped it out. So we basically kind of rigged it so we could still stay flying until the shipment came in, being uh, all the delays that were happening with the mill. And as you can see from E flight, all the new landing gear. So we're just going to put it back on. All right, now, one of the big things I had right here is there's a flat spot right there, but I filed it a little bit more to make sure it was super, super, super flat so that when we get the screw in there, it'll sit nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna give you some leverage. Okay, there you go, let go. Let go. Oh, wow, with those two landing gears in the back with that one in the front, it makes it look like it's just, Okay, resist me a little bit. Yeah. position maybe you can see so those two screws they were just a little small and super super tight to get in so now the next step is to make sure that we get the the screw lined up right on that so we had it wrong good thing i pulled it out all right hold my airplane yep holding it Come over here in camera okay. and drop down drop down Yeah, Dad, don't forget, we got I think we got to straighten out a little bit. I'm not worried about that right now. Okay. Just making sure you know. Later. Look at that, no wiggle wobble. Just the, yeah, that's actually good. Okay, there we go. All right, we got the go ahead and set it down. installed. Down. Okay. So as you can see, we wrecked it and it bent this uh, pretty good, as well as even when it's on the ground, and I, and I did that really tight, so it's just a little too loose. We don't fly in grass, we go to an airfield, so really don't need that. It, it, but I still have it if I ever want to go back to it. But we're going to go ahead and replace all the landing gear. Okay. 
All right, let me inspect this a little bit. Put an air field, so really don't need that. It, it, but I still have it if I ever want to go back to it. But we're gonna go ahead and replace all the landing gear. Hold it. Yeah. Just warm it out. Okay. All right. Let me inspect this a little bit. Yeah, it looks like this in. Basically, you just kind of pinch it. Push it in and slide it in. There, there you go. we go. Kind of just had to push it a little bit harder. And let's go ahead. We got it back to the original stock. And when I want to switch back out to these, I will. But I even bent this when I when I landed. And I had to take a pair of pliers to, to bend it back into place. So that's why we're going to go with new. But when I do put these back on the other one, I'll take this and put it on the inside. So it prevents that wheel from sliding around a little bit. Okay, those, that three beeps that you just heard on there, that's that's okay. That means three cells. That's why it's giving you three beats, and that's exactly what we put on, a three cell. Uh, go ahead, grab my controller, Gregory, and power it yep. on. So right now, we're just gonna make sure that the servos are all set and real good on the inside. So go ahead, power it on. So we're powered on. So from here, we make sure that we got our safety on here, throttle down, and now we can turn this on. So when you're out at the airfield, that's the exact same startup and you let it sit and you let it go through its uh, checks. And you will notice that the tail wags saying that GPS is off or not installed. No, it actually is wagging. My son is talking about it's wagging because it's trying to find its GPS and its settings and it stops when it's set. So as it says, it stopped. You should have a green light on if you're in basic. This is nice purple light in there. All that's normal, okay? So, but the whole purpose of this is to make sure everything's still nice and straight on our servos. So you see how all the servos are straight? That's how I set it up too. And I didn't hook up the any of the rudders or I didn't hook anything up until after the servos were set straight according to my controller. And then from there, we kind of played with it. So we are messing with landing gear. And like I said, you gotta kind of put it on the ground and uh, go from there to make sure we're all good. So let's just see that nice turn oh, yeah. looking good. Go ahead, shut it down, Greg. Adjust this at all, which kind of looks like I might not have to because I already did it prior. All right, roll it. Nope, see how it's turning yep. left? Oh. We adjust it a little bit. So that's an easy fix. Straight. Now we flip this back. There you go. So now I straighten this up. And then tighten it. Tighten it back down. Not too tight. We made that mistake once. All right, now let's see. Now let's set this and much better okay um the red one mm -hmm. it was under the plane all right i'm just tightening down the wheels making sure they're all snug New nose piece. <laughs> mm -hmm, yep. Now, tiny screwdriver. Makes tiny screwdriver. The little issue that we were just having on that, this is going to be not the original, so you can see it doesn't fit exactly the same. Okay, so your prop, 
that side goes towards you that side goes towards the airplane it's also really shiny black versus kind of matte Once you get your prop on, you now take your little cap, make sure it's all being recorded. Make sure it that it's in view. Put your cap on. Then your washer. And then your nut. Nice and tight, not uh, not over tight. And that just snaps right back on. So there you go. We just replaced the landing gear because when I wrecked, it bent it real bad, replaced that front nose. And it it comes with stickers too. So where, where are they at, Gregory? Um, I don't. Oh, wow. There you go. Flying straight enough on the ground or driving straight enough on the ground taxiing, but not too worried about taxiing though. So right Elron goes to the right Elron. That's why you don't want to take those stickers off. I'm going to hold this so it stays on mm -hmm. the plane. Come down. Nothing holds that on other than the rubber bands. So sometimes when you're up there hot dogging it, this will shift a little bit. Always pay attention to that because you want this nice and centered. All right, here are the rubber bands. Now, how I put the rubber bands on might be a little different. I like to go cross and I try to have them not tangled, not one bit. So I'll put it on nice and easy. And then I kind of hold it in the center because if it can't stretch to me putting it on, it's not gonna hold it up in flight. So don't worry about over stretching it. If you want it to break, let it break on the ground. All right, go ahead and hold this. On so it's nice and flush and it's not like twisted and folded I'm trying to keep it as aerodynamic as possible and just uh, so it has this as smooth as flight as possible we got it on as straight as possible see this seam right here I lined it up to the seam right there to have it nice and straight and then you just kind of monitor it during flight because as you can see this will shift and especially when you're up there doing barrel rolls and stuff so you can see that has a little play so every time you come down just make sure you're lined up and everything's good because you can't glue that in am I in good view yeah. Camera crew needs to always make sure I'm doing that. All right here, plug it in. Yeah. Okay. And before you flip that on, let me turn on the remote. Okay, so now the remote needs to be turned on. And then... All right, so... Then you turn on the airplane. And you let it just go through uh, whatever it's got to go through. It's going to start wagging its tail, all that fun stuff. That could take up to 30 seconds. This must be done on level ground. That is very, 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 very important. Okay, so now that we got that, being that we were just messing with everything, I kind of just inspect uh, all my uh, ailerons, my rudder, just to make sure we're completely flush. 
and everything is straight as possible. And that looks pretty good. This, this right one might need to be adjusted just a skosh. All right, let me see the controller, Gregory. Here you go. Go ahead, hold the back. All right, gonna find mine. Hold the back. I'm holding it. So that's the sound a brand new blade makes. It's super crisp, super smooth, no humming, no wobbling, nothing like that. So, uh, seems pretty good. Let's look at look at the ailerons. Yeah, they're all good. 